Let me show you how to create a cinematic time period piece using After Effects and Generative Fill. All right, so I was on a hike and I found really cool mansion ruins. Luckily, I had my Osmo Pocket with me, so I got a shot of me in front of this chimney acting like there was a fire there. I shot this vertically because it gives me more resolution when I bring this into a 16 by nine composition. So I'll bring that into After Effects in a 16 by nine comp and I'll make a screen grab of right here when I'm standing. I'll go to composition, save frame as Photoshop layers. And then opening that PSD in Photoshop, I could resize it and reposition it as I like. I'll select my main chimney area here and I'll just select inverse and then I'll hit delete. I'll expand this selection by one pixel and I'll add my prompt. Okay, I'll hit generate and I have a few great options here. So I'll go with this one. I'll generate some more elements here as well as remove my generated feet and I'll add some foreground elements here that I could also isolate onto separate layers. Now, before we get any further, if you guys wanna see some exclusive tutorials and get early access to my new tutorials, then check out my YouTube membership page linked below. So I'll save this and bring the PSD into After Effects as a composition. And you'll notice I just added one more foreground element. So in my comp, I'm gonna bring my video layer into it. I'll line up my chimney perfectly with my background using the divide blending mode and tweaking the position until everything is white. That's how I know it's all lined up. Great. Now I'm gonna bring my video layer on the bottom and hide my chimney layer so the video layer is revealed underneath the PSD. You may notice a bit of camera movement just due to the wind and whatnot. So I'll have to do a little motion tracking to my video clip. So I'm gonna pre-comp my background. I'll leave my foreground elements here though. I'll select my video clip and I'll go track and stabilize, track motion. And this will bring up my layer panel and I'll select a high contrast track point. I'll analyze forward. And that track looks good. So I'll choose edit target and I'll select my background and hit apply. So the background layer jumps around a little bit. I have to tweak it using the anchor point to get it right back into position. And my track motion looks good. So I'll just parent my foreground elements to the main track layer as well. So they get that same motion. So now I wanna get a fire in this fireplace. So to do that, I have a clip here of a fireplace. I'm gonna just lay this in, scale it down and get it in position. I'll make it a 3D layer and change the orientation a bit, and I'll mask and feather it to blend it in. And I'll also make sure that I'll parent it to my background to get that tracked motion. So now the problem is I'm standing in front of it, so I'm actually gonna have to rotoscope myself. Some of you may be asking, well, if you're just gonna rotoscope yourself, then why shoot it on location in the first place? Great question. Well, the composite is actually gonna be a lot more believable because I'm actually in that location with the exact same lighting. Plus, having a clean roto layer allows me to color correct myself and add some nice edge lighting effects coming from the fire. So from here, I'll duplicate my video layer and I'll bring it behind my foreground, my barrel here. I'll double click on the video layer and I'll use the roto brush to rotoscope. I'm gonna speed up this rotoscope, but if you wanna dive deeper into rotoscoping, I have a whole playlist of rotoscoping tutorials you could check out here. So after I rotoscope and render this out with an alpha channel, I'll replace my roto layer with my pre-rendered version for quicker rendering. And now you can see my subject, me, is in front of the fireplace now with a nice isolated roto layer. So now I wanna work on color correction. Now, since this is a period piece type scene, I wanna change my shirt to a less distracting color. So I'll use the Lumetri color effect. And in hue versus saturation, I'll bring the blue level way down and this will turn my shirt into a gray, which is a lot less distracting and more fitting in the scene. Now I wanna add a little bit of edge lighting from the fire to my subject. So I'll use BCC edge lighting and I'll tweak the light direction and the elevation, as well as the highlight settings like highlight color, highlight intensity, and post blur. So now since my fire actually changes intensity as fires do, I'll actually option click on my highlight intensity and I'll use the wiggle expression to make this parameter randomly change intensities throughout my comp. And you see how that looks. It really brings a sense of realism to the scene here. It looks really good. All right, so finishing off this effect, I'll boost up my shadows to blend it in with my scene a little bit more. Now I'll duplicate my fire layer. I'll change the orientation so it looks like it's a reflection on the ground. I'll lower the opacity to about 20% and I'll add a Gaussian blur to it. And you see it's kind of a nice reflection on the floor there. It just gives us a little bit more movement in our scene and makes it more believable. Next, I'll create a camera. 
I'll adjust my foreground objects here in Z space. And then in my camera settings, I'll animate the point of interest and position keyframes. And using the dolly to cursor tool, I'll simulate a dolly out movement. And with some final color correction, here's our final result.